Welcome Transformers fans, my name is Composite Energy and today I will bring you my review of the Transformers The Last Knight Voyager class, Hound. Yes, Hound. And here he is in his vehicle mode from The Last Knight movie, which is a Mercedes Unimog tactical vehicle. Yep. And it's very nice. It's a very nice vehicle mode that is ve that's fairly accurate. I mean, pretty pretty close to the actual real world vehicle, which is really nice. And yep, yeah, and it's got a lot of detail. You have the Mercedes logo there, the headlights, these other headlights. Uh, nice detailing. I think this vehicle would have used a little bit more paint apps, like more paint applications. Like I would have liked maybe these headlights up here to be a little painted, but other than other than that minor minor complaint. It's a really nice vehicle mode. Very, very movie accurate, which is really nice. And as you can see, he also has a little detailing of the uh, Decepticons that he's actually taken out over, over the years. At least I'm assuming that's what that is. And yeah, really, really nice vehicle mode. And as you can see back here, these are the uh, accessories that he comes with, his weapons. And in the vehicle mode, you can actually store them like this as a sort of a turret, which can move around. And you have the weapons there. So it's ba he basically has an artillery back here of like missiles and then machine guns. These can move either way. They can, you know, move up and down. Do that. I kind of have it like this better as so like an artillery. So you can take down aerial uh, Decepticons. So this also comes off. I will show this off now. This is the weapons combining it together. He has, you can set, take them apart. Then you have this piece, which the only point of this piece is to connect these other weapons in order to in order to basically store it in his store it at least effectively in his vehicle mode like that. That's the whole point of uh, this piece. So I'm going to set this off to the side and then you have these other weapons, which can be removed and removed. And as you can see, they have a lot of little peg holes or I think these are called hard points. I actually finally found out the name, uh, the proper name of these things. So all of these hard points, you can actually just, you know, connect them and uh, mix and mash the um, the weapons. And I always like that they have that little, uh, I always like that as an option. Where you can sort of mix and match the uh, the weapons. Like this. It makes no sense, but you have... But... The option is there. It makes no sense, but you can do whatever you want. So yeah, these are the accessories. These are the four weapons he comes with, plus uh, this piece. So let's put this off to the side. So this is what it looks like without it, and it's still really nice and really, really well, uh, well, well done. So enough gushing over the vehicle mode. It's time to get in a to get into a round with Hound. So let's get on with a transformation. So first off, you pop this up, and then you how was this? You're supposed to like separate this a bit, and there we go. Separate this here, and then you have to angle it so that you can pull this out. The tricky part is trying to get this piece out from under here because this is supposed to go in under there this piece which is kind of tricky getting it back in there but it is possible what I recommend doing is sort of angling it like this and then pushing it in like that that's like the easiest way I've seen in order to take that out and you can sort of do it the same way angle it out and boom so yeah just be careful putting that back into his uh, vehicle mode we do the same with this arm well yeah these are the uh robot arms We'll, uh, we'll strain them out later. Let's get let's do the, the legs first. So come down here. Separate these. There we go. And then you... What was the part? Separate. Separate and then pull it, push it forward. And then for this... Oh yeah, you bring this down. Oh yeah. Take this piece. Move it back as far as you can like that. And then this will just sort of slip into there. Sort of like uh, like that. These will work as like heels. And then for this, you like that, like this. Pull this down, rotate it like that, and then you come in here, and then you take, here we go, take this piece and bring it down, like that. Straighten it out there. Oh, and one cool thing I've noticed: when you have the wheel like this. It rolls freely, but the moment you have it like this, it becomes 
like a ratchet when you straighten it out. That is very clever. I don't know. I, I can't really tell how they're able to do that. But they just, it's got to be like a tension thing or something. Because the moment you put it like this, it's like rolling freely. And then the ratchet starts appearing right there. So just uh, make sure it's like that. Put it like this. And then flip out the foot. So there we have one foot. Same thing over here. Like that. This piece there put it back there and then foot and we have his legs so then for the body first off you pull this back then this i'll do the head the head reveal can happen when you pull this down so i'll try and not uh, spoil that so then for this how was this What was this? It's supposed to set. You're supposed to be able to set. Oh wait, my bad. You have to like. There we go. Like pull this back. Gotta finagle it until you can pull this back. There we go. There we go. There. Then you rotate this until it is like that. Then you sort of angle this back here. So you may have to force it a little bit to sort of get past this, but then you like lift it a bit for back here and then have them be out like this. Then for the arms, you pull this up. And here's a weird thing, and I guess one complaint with this figure I don't like is that the only thing that's holding this in place is like this little, this little piece here. So you have to like push it in. And if you do it correctly, it'll stay in place. But sometimes it, 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 it sometimes comes loose. Well, so far it's doing fine there. So same thing here. I found that this arm, it gives me a little bit more trouble. And then, let's see if it holds. See, it, it won't, it has problems connecting. I actually wish they would have, I wish this would have just, um, instead of that, oh, it's holding now. I would have preferred that this would just do a straight connection there instead of relying on this. So, let's see. Then, the arm. And this part, you kind of have to do it at the same time. Like, put the arm there, fold this in, and then fold it out completely. Same thing here, fold out the hand, like that, fold this in, and then fold it out completely. We have it there. And then to make it a little easier, you put this all the way back, and you get your nail in there, and sort of have to start revealing the head, and then push this in, and it'll click into place, and then completely pop the head off. And here we have Hound in his really, really nice looking robot mode, which is... Pretty accurate to how he looks in the movie. Check, check out that face sculpt. Check out that head sculpt. That is really nice. Uh, uh, like like always with all these hound figures, like this is the, the obviously there was the Age of Extinction one, which is completely different. I would have liked if they if they molded in like a little uh, what is it the bullet cig cigar that he has in the movies. I wish they would give that to him. I know some other third party figures have that. And I understand why they don't put it on these figures, but I would have liked that they made like a really small one there that you have to like really notice. I also like this little uh, graying that they did here, the silver bits, because it's supposed to be like an aged beard. So he has like gray in the beard. That's really neat. But very, very cool. This is a very, very nice figure. Let's get on with our articulation really quick. Um, he has great articulation, but his bulk, which once again, it's really nice. Like the only part that looks like a car are these wheels back here. And then this, which is clearly the, the front of the car. But that's honestly really minor, because he has great articulation, but something this stuff might get in the way. Oh, also you can then slide this forward. You can like slide this over to sort of complete his look. To sort of have the, uh, I guess the missile launcher there so that he can, you know, fire it. Which he did do in Age of Extinction. I don't remember if he did it in last night, but he did do it in Age of Extinction where he fired these. So then, and like I said, very nicely detailed. Lots of details all around. Like how he has his belt here. And I like how this one gives him more of a, of a gut than the uh, Age of Extinction one. I'm, I'm just going to say it right now. This is a much better ver a much better figure than the Age of Extinction version of Howd. Not to say that that was a bad figure. That was not a bad figure. But this one is so much better and much more movie accurate. So for articulation, you have some hinges there. They can rotate. Hinges out. You have a double elbow which is nice a double bend at the elbow you have one hinge there and one hinge there so you can double bend all the way he actually has a wrist swivel not for our transformation but he has and can go in and out 
plus a swivel there. He can do uh, because of all of his uh, bulk, he can only he can do a pretty okay kick. Uh, there's rotation there, like it's on a, like a, it's on a like a road it's a rotating hinge. Rotation there. He has a pretty good knee, and the foot can also pivot, which is nice, and rotate. Like I said it has its own little really soft ratchet, and he has a waist swivel. Plus his head is also on a ball joint. He has a waist swivel. Like I said, he has excellent articulation, but some of his uh, like some of these uh, what I call this kibble? Yeah, some of his a little some of his kibble will get in the way of that. So you have to work with that. But still, it's a fantastic figure with fantastic amounts of articulation. Oh, plus this the belt can actually um flip up. I don't know why, but it can do that. It can do that. It doesn't really do anything in terms of like when a transformation. And here's another thing. The arms, I really wish that it had like, like it, it'll catch it. But I wish that it would just have a, like a, uh, it would just peg into here. Like say they, they could have put a peg hole here and a peg here and it just pegs into place like that. I would have preferred that instead of this sort of holding it. Kind of weird. Kind of weak. Didn't didn't like that. That's a, that, that's like a one design flaw on this figure. It's not a, it's not a deal breaker. At least not to me. I don't I don't think it's a deal breaker. It's, it's still a fantastic figure. But I really wish this would have done, this would have been done differently. And like when it connects, it's really tough. So okay. Uh huh. Oh, plus something really cool. You can actually remove his helmet. Yeah. You have these little peg uh, uh, hard points there, and you have the pegs here. Yeah, and check out that detail. Really nicely detailed head. He's got the nice blue eyes. There we go. I got it on camera. You got the blue eyes. And I said the nice graying on the beard, which I like. I would say a lot of people wouldn't like that, but I like that they gave it because it, it looks like he's aged in between movies. And I'll get you in a little theory that I have between um, the two uh, uh, figures, like why this one looks so drastically different from the Age of Extinction one. And then you just pop it back on, and there's his helmet back on. Really nice touch that he can move from his helmet. They didn't have to do that, but they did. Really, really nice figure. Ah, so let's get his weapons into here. Like I said, you can combine all of the weapons, but the way that I like to present it, the way that I like to use these accessories, is that you can do any number of combinations. This is how I do it. Just sort of do this. Maybe would this be better? No, I actually prefer this with the machine gun going a little bit further out. Like that. Very simple. That's pretty much it. This has the the cannons and the chain guns all in one, so you can, you know rain destruction on his foes on his set on the uh, deceptipunks and then from back and then for this i just plug it back here which is fine you can also like put these back here and sort of give them like some uh some artillery but that looks kind of weird like i don't i don't, I don't like how the, that doesn't look right on hound and now we have i guess the one thing the one thing that makes the age of extinction that at least to me makes the age of extinction version of this uh the the age of extinction hound a little bit better is the amount of weapons that that figure came with this one honestly only comes with uh well two types of guns it comes with four guns and that's it the two double barrel cannons and the chain guns because this is not a weapon that's just a holder and that's pretty much it while the other one came with like 10 different guns and a knife which was awesome it had a, a huge amount a large amount of weapons which is really nice, and I think the best thing about that Age of Extinction uh, figure. It's still a so I don't have it. It's still a so uh, well, for what I've seen, the Age of Extinction uh, Voyager Hound is still a nice figure, but it, it wasn't really movie accurate. It, it looked very weird. It, it looked too... And this is sort of... Well, I might as well explain the, th the theory that I have. I kind of see that Age of Extinction Hound as a young version of him. Because one, he didn't have his gut, which this one kind of has. Like, it does. You can tell he's not really uh, built or anything. He does have his signature gut. And, um... And... What was I going to say? 
so, so yeah, pretty pretty much just to sum it up, because I'm, I'm I'm I might start rambling. I see as the Age of Extinction Hound as a younger hound who was more physically fit and even had a, a full uh, black beard, like he was a younger hound. And this and the one we see in the movie is just a much older and you know veteran hound, which is neat. That that's sort of how I see it. If you see it like that, it it gives it gives more. I guess it, it it gives it makes that Age of Extinction Hound make more sense if you see it as a, as a younger hound, and then you have this one as the older hound, because that because the AOE one doesn't look anything like his movie counterpart. It just vaguely resembles it. Like I said, it just looks like a younger hound. Uh, but this and I, and I and I find that this is a much better figure than that one. Not a bad figure, but this one is the far superior movie hound. But the one thing is that his uh, is that the AOE Hound has more weapons and has more movie and then their movie accurate weapon. These weapons here do not show up in the movie, which is unfortunate. These are cool guns, but I like the amount of I like the ones that they have over there. However, they did uh, when making this figure, they did keep that in mind that if you had the uh, AOE Hound, you can actually give him all of the uh, all of those weapons. He has all of the um, hard points. And even this thing and on the other guns to store all of those weapons, which is really nice. So if you happen to have the um, uh, Age of Extinction Hound, you can transfer all of those weapons to this version and it, it, it works fantastically. I, I might even have to hunt down, hunt down, uh, find me that Age of Extinction, uh, uh, that Voyager Hound, just to give this guy his weapons. And I think that'll make this figure even, even cooler. Uh, so yeah, fantastic figure. Uh, that's pretty much I already said the facts about that. Oh, one interesting fact, both in the movie and in a lot of early stock photos, and even some other stock photos, um, where they're showing off this figure, he's supposed to have the Red Cross symbol here on his helmet and on the side of the doors in his vehicle mode. But as you can plainly see, they removed it. They had, apparently they could not do that because the Red Cross symbol is actually trademarked. I didn't know that. I think that kind of stinks. That, that's that's pretty lame. Once again, the trademarks get it, the, the trademarks and copyright sort of get in the way of of uh, of um, accuracy. They, they just get in the way. Kind of like when they have when they're when the Hasbro and Takara or whatever ha are forced to change names. You know the whole Octane is now called Octone. They can't call him Octane. I'm still calling him Octane. But um, yeah, I didn't know that the Red Cross symbol is actually trademarked. Had no idea, so they couldn't put it on the figure. Kind of a shame. However, then that makes this figure, at least his robot mode, looks a lot closer to his Age of Extinction uh, look instead of his the, instead of the Last Night look, since the Last Night one did have the Red Cross logo on his helmet and the door. But that aside, overall, this is a fantastic, fantastic figure. Couple of flaws, still an, an, an amazingly solid figure, and I highly recommend that you go get him. He's just fantastic. And like I said, if you have the Age of Extinction Hound, just transfer all of those weapons to this one. This this is your quintessential this is the quintessential movie hound as of right now. Fantastic figure, highly recommend it. So yeah, this has been my review of the Transformers The Last Night Voyager Class Hound. And this is Composite Energy signing off. Peace out.